Smart! Pete's car smart! Pete's car smart! Where even the littlest tech tips make a big, big, big difference. This is Pete over at SWRNC uh, DIY Auto School and also YouTube channel SWRNC Pete. Check that channel out. A lot of cussing, a lot of moaning, a lot of groaning, a lot of bitching and whining going on over there. But everything I say over there makes a lot of fucking sense. And right now what we're doing is we are working on this fucking Carmen Ghia. Volkswagen Carmen Ghia at that. Now, the reason that I'm bringing this up because there's nothing really major here to show you how to and do this and do that and all that because basically this car is actually a pretty clean Carmen Ghia. But the real deal is, is guys out there and girls that want to buy these cars, what are we fucking looking for when we buy them? Because the Carmen Ghia, the Volkswagen Carmen Ghia was the most ridiculous fucking Volkswagen ever made. It was designed as a one-piece body. You can't replace no body panels without cutting them off, welding them on. If you wreck the car, you basically see the situation you got. All right. Uh, now, is this real super thick Bondo? No, it's not. But it is two or three skim coats of Bondo because this fender has been wrecked several fucking times and has been hammered and dollied out. I even hammered and dollied it out before I put Bondo and Evercoat polyester filler on it. I'm in the stage right now of putting a guide coat on the Bondo, on the bodywork that I've done. I'm going to put a guide coat on that and then block it down to make sure that i got all my highs and low spots out. The problem we have buying these fucking Carmen Ghias is that basically, I'm just going to be honest with you, they're fucking junk. Okay, this car is a very inexpensive, cheaply made vehicle that was not well thought through. When I say that, what I'm talking about is rust prevention. All right, if you look at the front end over here, can you see over there the front end? Yeah, right, right here, right in this area right here. If you look right here, you can see that it's got these fresh air vents that go into the vehicle. All right, now that's nice and dandy that it's got the little spring right here and the little vent. But the situation is, it's still dragging in wet, humid moisture. Whether the air is uh, sunny blue sky out or whether it's raining and snowstorming outside, these little fucking things right here are the Carmen Ghia's worst enemy. What's another part of this vehicle that's a, a bad choice of uh, uh, design, you might say? Well, we're still looking at the front end, aren't we? And if you look at the front end right here, all right, this guy here just happened to get lucky. The front end of this has never been wrecked. I've only seen two fucking cars in my life, two cars that I have completely restored, and I've restored hundreds of these fucking things, hundreds of them, all right? This is how I started my shop, is restoring and building Volkswagens. I used to have a Volkswagen junkyard. I used to have parts that dated all the way back to the mid 40s, all right? Engine parts, and then up. Uh, you know, I don't, do I know all the technical names of everything? Do I know this, that, and the other? Who gives a rat fuck? That's for a fucking nerd to know. All right, I'm a human being, and I know cars. That's all that counts right now. But the front nose on this is very, very clean and straight. But the problem we got is the rest of the car is fucked. Look at this fucking fender where it got hit more than once. This is a more than once accident. This thing's been hit. I would say at least three fucking times right here in this corner. As we get into the headlight, you can see where somebody sloppily fucking uh, replaced the headlight ring in here, the headlight bucket, to repair that. And I'm going to have to go back and clean all this because that, that looks like shit. They brazed that in with braze and then they didn't even grind it down. So when you put the headlight on the fucking bucket, what happens is the headlight falls off. And then we're going to come over here to this quarter panel 
and take a good look at that quarter panel. Uh, another situation we have. Bang, 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 bish, bash, boo, ba, ba, right there in your fucking face. That corner has been fucking wrecked and totaled out more than once. But hold on, we aren't done there. That's not the end of that fucking story. Because if we keep going around the car, you can see where it's fucking dented on the lower panel here. As we come around, oh my God, what do we got here? More fucking Bondo, more fucking dents. Son of a bitch, are you fucking joking me? The whole rear quarter panel is just like the front quarter panel. It's just full of fucking uh, dents and dings and fucking shit all over the fucking car. But let's go down. Let's keep going here because we're not even done there. Uh, yeah, here we go right here. Somebody took a fucking screwdriver and tried to jam theirself in the door and pry the door, but it fucked that jam up. Uh, that's fucked up. And then we come over here and... This is the least hit part, but it's still fucked up. It's still a fucked up situation because it's it's fucked up. It's a fucked up fucking deal. So when you're buying one of these cars and they say, oh, it's a beautiful car, it's a great fucking car, you better mark my fucking word that you're gonna have at least four gallons of fucking Bondo stuck in that great, beautiful, fucking great fucking automobile that you wanna purchase so bad. There's something else we need to look at, something else we need to look at because we're not even done there yet. We're not done there, because what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to uh, uh, educate you on the Volkswagen Carmen Ghia is what I'm doing. The only thing that this car has good for it right now, right now, we're not yet, but right now, is the nose has never been wrecked. The nose is in real good shape. That's the first thing that you need to check on these fucking things, and the way that you check it, you go up inside the fucking trunk, and you check it very, very closely to see if it's all crushed and dented. Most of the time when the front end gets wrecked, they'll take a fucking sledgehammer or some type of fucking tool that they can get in there because you can't take a hammer and pound that out. You can't do it. A hammer, there's, there's only this much room between the nose and where the tire goes. So you have to get in there and, and they, take, they take chisels and hammers and they bam, 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 bam. You see what I'm saying? Bim, bam, bop. You know, they start fighting the fucking car. This shit here and over here. And start doing that shit to straighten it out. And by the time you get it, it's got two gallons of Bondo on the front nose. So that's the first thing you need to look at. If that nose is fucked up and wrecked, what are we going to do next, my friend Pete? What's the next step? We're going to crawl under the car. I know, that, I know that's pretty hard for you to do, to get down on your back and your knees, to look up under the vehicle and check it. I know that's, that's just a, a, a god-awful thing to do, even though you're spending $10,000 for one of these fucking junk-ass bitches. But you got to. You're going to have to get down on the ground and inspect the bottom of the car. See, this is a spot right here where rust collects. Right here. This is, this is a good spot on the front end where it, rust starts to deteriorate the bottom of this fender because that's where moisture and debris catches. And what happens when that tire is spinning like this, all right, because it's going forward most of the time, it's just throwing and slopping it and kicking the fucking mud and dirt on there. And then it cakes up and, and we don't clean it out. And, and pretty soon before you know it, wow! Bottom of the fucking fenders are rotted. That's right. That leads us in to the inside of the trunk here, the nose. That usually rots out as well because what happens? The rubber gasket seal rots out on the car. And then water and debris collects under that spare tire where nobody thinks to check. Nobody thinks to check that, but guess what? We got another fucking problem. If you look right there, what are we looking at right there? It's a big giant hole right in the middle of the fucking nose down on the very, very bottom of the car. Wow, what the fuck is that, Pete? What's going on with that idea? What that is, what you're looking at right there, that is where your horn is. That's your fucking horn. It's got a rubber gasket that's supposedly supposed to seal that hole up, but does it? Not after 60 fucking years. They could have stuck the horn up under the fucking fender and bolted it to the bumper bracket just like they do on uh, fucking Volkswagen Bugs, but don't ask me why they put the fucking horn inside the trunk right there where it's going to collect rot and rust and dirt and filth and water. I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. All right? I I'm just here to tell you what you need to look out for when you're buying one of these piles of fucking shit. That's all I'm fucking doing. So now 
as we travel down the road map of Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, now we're looking in here. Now we're going inside the fender, well, of the front fender, and what do we got here? We got a, a, a encased box that most people don't even know about this because there's actually a panel that bolts to that, and the panel is so filthy dirty that it usually matches all this here. And most people that buy these cars don't even know that that uh, compartment there even exists inside there. And what happens once again, what do we got down here? What the fuck is going on here? What's this? My friend Pete is showing you this is where dirt and debris and mud and rot collects right here. This is the place. You can see all the dirt falling out as I sift it out. All right, there you go. And, and then what happens is our two little plug holes, you can see them right here, they get clogged up and, and, and they don't drain properly and all of a sudden, bam, there's more rust. So we start rust right there, which happens to start in this area, and then it leads into this section here because we got our heater box here. We got this fucking heater box that travels like this, and, and then it blows down up inside and everywhere. So now we got us a double fucking whammy here. We got a double fucking whammy that's saying, I'm getting moisture going in here, and I'm getting it coming up here. I'm getting fucked in both fucking holes each way that I can fucking fuck. Which leads in to the most notorious part of the vehicle as far as rust goes, and that is the rocker panel. The rocker panels are very, very notorious for rotting and rusting because that's where our heater boxes are, and that's where... What do we got up inside that fender again? Exactly, a fresh air duct that goes all the way down through this fucking thing. And that is where, uh, yeah, rot, rust, and moisture builds up and it starts rotting out. This car, this car is very clean because there's no rust at all in any of his rocker panels whatsoever. And his heater boxes work 100% thoroughly. So that's good. And then if we look up under, oh my God, we're, we're looking at a floor. We're looking at the bottom of the Volkswagen floor. There's another fucking section that's notorious for rotting and rusting due to what part of the country you live in and did the previous owners actually take care of the bottom of the vehicle. This car here was from Colorado. It was stored for 35 years in a fucking building and it's in very good shape. The floor does not need replaced, but we're gonna go ahead and remove the body off the car just so we can sandblast and clean the floor pan frame, front suspension, rear suspension, etc. Another spot that you might want to look at, another spot that's very important, depending on the year of the vehicle that you're purchasing, early model bugs, the battery was over here, 6 volt, if it was a 12 volt, the battery would be sitting here. The batteries were located in these Carmagias in the engine compartment, so if the battery was located on this side of the Carmagia that you're looking at, then you're going to want to dig down inside there, you're going to want to get inside there, and let's go ahead and get the flashlight. I, I want to look in there and see what the fuck's going on in there. I, I'm a little bit curious. So if we take our flashlight, we can see that we have rats that were living in there, rats and mice and whatever. But this is a good section. Look over here on the side of that wall, if, if I can get the light right there where the light's shining. Look at that and see the rust, the surface rust that has built up on that. Now what that's caused from is not the rat piss and the rat stains that we are sniffing on and smelling right now, but that is also caused from the battery being sitting here and acid leaking down into this part of the rear quarter panel. Which brings us to this section right here. This is rust. This is what we're looking at. It is rust and the spotlight is now shining on it and it is now performing for us because the rust is very popular on these cars and that is what rust does. Rust rots out Carmen Gias. Carmen Gias are full of fucking rust. Unless you happen to get a car like this one which is very, 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 very rare. And I would not say that this is a concourse fucking job here. I would not say that this is a, a car that the guy got lucky on because due to the fact of all the fucking body work and all the fucking major destruction that has been displaced on all four corners of the vehicle. But I would say that the owner of this vehicle was very, very lucky to find a vehicle in this condition due to the fact that there's only one spot on the whole car that has rust and that's right back in that corner where I showed you on the vehicle where the battery was sitting. This is a very, very clean Carmen Ghia. It, it, it's in very good shape, minus all the body work that we got to do to it. The situation you have is when you're looking for one of these fucking cars right here, 
and you got your heart set that you've got to have a Carmen Ghia, the older the car is, the better you better fucking look. I'm gonna go get a little tool. I'm gonna show you this tool, and this is a very important tool when shopping or purchasing one of these vehicles. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I'm back on the scene here, and the tool that I'm talking about, is a, it's a very, very easy, simple, inexpensive tool, but if you are in the market of buying one of these and you're looking at thousands of dollars, these Carmagias aren't cheap. Even in this condition right here, they are not fucking cheap, all right? Because they are like uh, an icon of Volkswagen being the one-piece body car that they are, this, that, and the other, and blah, blah, blah. But if you're really, really dead set on getting a Carmen Ghia, I'm gonna show you the most important tool to have to find all the problems on that car that somebody just painted and it looks like brand new and they're telling you, oh my God, this thing's beautiful. It's a two, I'm the second owner of it. Look how nice and beautiful this car is. Because I'm gonna tell you, if you don't have this fucking tool, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna end up putting thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fucking man hours in restoring that Carmen Ghia that you wanted. The tool that I'm talking about is right here. This is a tool that is very, very important on purchasing when you are looking at a vehicle such as this. open that up and I'm gonna get it out and this is a tool that I've had for many years and it's actually a magnet this is a very very precise style magnet that is used all right to measure the thickness of the paint and the bondo and when I tell you that I'm going to show you that so what we're doing here we're looking at the rear quarter panel this has been stripped down to bare metal there's no paint at all on it nothing whatsoever I am going to take my paint measuring gauge, you can, that's what it says right there, paint measuring gauge. I am going to stick it on it. Now watch real close what this does when I pull it out. And you can see, uh, you can see the gauge opening. All right, let me get that right there. That says that that is at a uh, six, four. Okay, so it's uh, a four that I'm pulling it out to, almost five. All right, you see what I'm saying? Now, we go ahead and take our magnet and let's find a spot that has paint. Okay, the dash right here has paint. Let's go ahead and put, okay, and as we pull it out, you can see that it goes to approximately 10. Let's see there, what does that say, 10? Uh, yeah, so we went from four bare metal, uh, you know, between t 10 and uh, so on uh, paint. Now, we get into Bondo, and this is where we really gotta be watching this. And let's go right down here on this section. We're gonna start where it's really, really thin right here. So this would be Bondo. Let's go ahead and hit this area. We'll, we'll say that that's our paint as well. And watch as I pull the magnet out here. Do you see what I'm saying? Now we're getting to the point that there's no hardly any metal there at all. See? So that would be like if you had Bondo and paint together. It would come out to about a 14 gauge. All right, now we're gonna move it up here to where we're really fucking moving on the Bondo. I mean, we're, we're really snow skiing here. So let's sled on up to this section here. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and you can see, I can barely feel that the magnet is actually sucking itself down, but I can feel it trying to pull away, but not really. Now, then you would come over here, see, and then, oh, looky there. So that's bare metal, but then the, it's not even sticking here. Do you see what I'm saying? So you take your magnet and you move it around. Figure, okay, looky there. All right, hold on. See how it's thinner right here? But then as we get up in here, it's really thick. So if your heart is really set on purchasing one of these vehicles right here, make sure you have this fucking tool right here, okay? I don't like to advertise. I'm going to cover the name up. Make sure that you have this tool right here to find the situations and the problems that might arise from buying this car and save you thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars 
and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of man hours. There's a few other items I'd like to go over before I say my friend Pete say goodbye and wish you luck on your Carmen Ghia venture. Let's look at that real quick and then I have got to get back to work because I got a lot of Bondo to spread on this car and uh, it's not a fun day. It's not a fun day, but my friend Pete's gonna finish it out and get the fucker done and out of my fucking shop. Now I've already showed you a couple places to look. We were talking about right inside here in this area. Make sure that it's nice and clean. Pull that spare tire out, look at it, view it, inspect it, make sure that wasn't wrecked or it's rotted out there. We talked about the front fenders right in this area here rotted out. And we also talked about the hidden panel that not too many people know about on the inner front fenders right there on the back side. And we also talked about the fucking battery situation. All right, that's important. And more than likely you will have rust, but if there's rust right there, that's gonna lead up under and you'll probably have rust down here as well. And then we talked about our rocker panels. Rocker panels are very, very notorious for rot and rust on these cars, and we went over the situations why. Another thing that you wanna check real close is you wanna go ahead and lift the carpet up off of the floor. That's right, if the buyer is going, if the seller is really interested in selling that car, he's not gonna mind if you lift the carpet up. It Visually inspect the floor uh, on each side especially over on the driver's side that's the most common side to get rust because that's the most common side where most people sit but you want to check that floor and make sure that it's solid and sound and make sure that it's not rotted because a lot of times the bottom of the car looks good the bottom of the car looks good but then when you get up inside here up inside here up inside here it's all flaky and rotted out rust ready to fall apart so that's basically what you want to look for. And then of course, your, your most common things, uh, just you know, visually inspect the gauges, make sure they're working, and you know, open the hood up as it's open, and check your wire harness, make sure that it hasn't been jerry-rigged with, and fucked with, and it all looks original possibly, and it's not you know, a handmade job. And then inspect the motor. We got a brand new motor, I'm not gonna uncover it, but you wanna check the engine for end play and all this other mechanical stuff that I don't have time to go over. So all my friend Pete can tell you at this point in time is that if you're looking to purchase a Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, inspect that motherfucker like inspection just can't fucking be enough. If the owner of the vehicle gets uh, short mouth with you and short tempered, tell him to fuck off. All right, because he's hiding something. If he doesn't want you to inspect that vehicle because you want to buy it, he's a fucking dildo anyway. And he's not really trying to sell it. He's trying to give it to you as a piece of shit and make money off you while he's at it. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, watching your ass and making sure you don't get the stick in the ass and making sure you don't get fucked while you're buying your used Carmen Ghia that you've always fucking wanted. We'll see you later. Take it easy. My friend Pete, your friend Pete. Watch all my beautiful videos. If you watch, listen, and learn, you too will be a smart mouth like me. Take it easy. Right there. All right. I got to go put my magnet away. I don't want to lose that tool. That's, that's an important tool to have. Uh, I've had that thing for about 30 fucking years. One of the best tools I'll ever own. We'll see you later. Yes. Fucking hell ya! Bitch! and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of man hours. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.